Okay, we're going to continue our study in section 3.1 and uh, about logic and let's talk about now uh, the symbols for the connectives. Last time we saw uh, that there are connectives which joins two simple statements. So we saw the connective and, right? So you have, for example, today is raining and today is cold. So the, those are two statements. So it's a compound statement and it's connected by the, uh, the word and. So and is a connective. There's also the connective or. And we saw also the, uh, uh, the, the word not, which creates a negation of a statement. Okay? So we have a statement. And uh, when we put the word not, that negates. And we saw some uh, examples where that can be kind of tricky. So especially when you have, uh, when you have uh, quantifiers, right? So that's why I gave you that little diagram. So you, you do the, uh, the opposite meaning or the negation correctly. So now we're going to do, what we're going to do now is to convert those simple statements, any simple statements into variables, into letters. You all remember in, well, maybe some of you remember in math when we did things like x equals to 2, right? Um, so we're, we're saying that x has the value of 2. So we, we're going to kind of do the same thing but with statement instead of giving values numerical values to variables we're going to give statements to variables so here is an example and i say uh, p we use a uh, colon here and let's say the dog is old okay so this is saying that the uh, the variable p or the the letter P represents the statement the dog is old. So we're going to put now these kind of statements into a variable. All right, now let's see now the symbols for the connective. So the first is the not, not statement. Let's take a look for example, let's say if I write the dog is not old. So how do I put this into a symbol, symbolic form? Well, we are trying to do here when when we give statements to variables, we we try to give positive statements to a variable. Okay. So in other words, what do I mean by positive statement? We get rid of the not. Okay. So we're gonna call p. Uh, we're gonna let p to be uh, be the dog is old. So that's what P is. So if P is the dog is old, so that means that this statement here is the opposite of the of P, okay? So this statement here is the negation negation of P. Now we have a symbol for that. The negation of P is really this symbol, the squiggly symbol, it's called the tilde. So negation p, let me move this down here. I actually, I can put it here. Okay. So when I write negation p, this really means the dog is not owed. Okay. So now let's take a look at the connective AND. Let's say, for example, that I have a compound statement. Let me put that in here for you. All right, here it is. All right, this is a compound statement, and it's two statements. See, the first one is the dog is gray. So let me highlight that. This is one statement. The other statement is the dog is not old. So you can see it's a compound statement and there's a connective. Now uh, you don't see the word and here, but when you have the comma and the word but, so the dog is great, but 
the dog is not old. So this really represents the connective and. Okay, so this is actually and, the same as and. Okay, so the goal here is to convert these things into symbols. Okay, that's what we're doing. So how do we convert the first one in symbol? Well, we can call P to be the statement the dog is gray. That's what P is. Now look at the second statement here. The second statement says the dog is not old, but I, I want to, so I have, I'm going to have another statement, Q. And Q, uh, you think they should be the dog is not old, but it, remember we're trying to give to those little variables there, we try to make them positive. So we're going to get rid of the not for a moment. Okay, so we're going to give the not, the dog is old. When I, uh, what I mean by positive is really getting rid of the not in this statement. So the dog is old. So let's say P is the dog is gray and Q is the dog is old. So now how do we write the whole expression into symbols? So let me move this over here. Okay. Well, uh, this expression here is really P. Okay, the dog is gray. The symbol for and is the carrot. So it looks like a V upside down. And the symbol for this here should be what? Well, it says the dog is not old. So that's exactly the opposite of Q. Okay, so I'm going to write negation Q. So that's the symbol for this whole expression. Okay, when I uh, when I convert this whole thing into a symbol, this is what I get. Right. Now let's take a look at the third, con uh, the, the third example here. Third connective is a connective or. Now when we talk about the w the word or, so let me show you here in the PowerPoint. So we talked about. The connective and okay, the connective or. Now uh, there are actually two types of or. One is called exclusive or, and the other is inclusive or. Now let me give you an example of an exclusive or. Let's say, for example, uh, a, a person is being sentenced by a judge, by a judge, and the judge said, "Okay, I sentence you to." Uh, 10 years in prison or uh, two years in prison or uh, community service okay so when the judge says that prison or community service so that means it, it's an exclusive or because you can either uh, choose it I mean, you can either have prison time or you can do community service but not both at the same time so that's an exclusive or an example of an inclusive or would be for uh, let's say you go to a restaurant and the wait uh, the waitress asks you uh, you want soup or a sandwich so that or there uh, means uh, it could be a soup it could it could be soup or it could be sandwich or it could be both at the same time so you can have both at the same time that's that's the inclusive or and that's the or that we're going to use here in this course it's called the mathematical or in fact, that's the word that we used in the previous chapter when we talked about sets. Remember the union of two sets, the union of A and B is the set of elements in A or in B. That or means it could be in the element could be in A or B or both at the same time. So that's the exclusive that's the inclusive or. And that's the or we're gonna use in this course. Okay. So let's go back here. Uh, let me give you an example uh, and then let's try to put that in symbols. Okay, here it is. Now we have um, again the compound statement. It says Carl will not go to the movies or Carl will not go to the baseball game. So that's a complete compound sentence or statement. And there are two simple statements in there. There is this one here, Carl will not go to the movies. 
and then the other one is Carl will not go to the baseball game and here's the connective or right there's a symbol for or the connective the symbol for the connective or is uh, the carrot upside down okay and okay now how we put these two into symbols okay well let's let's say p p is the first symbol remember we try to make those little uh, variables the simple statements as positive statements okay so we're gonna get rid of the not here the word not so we're gonna say Carl will go to the movies and then here's another statement it's a different statement it says Carl will not go to the baseball game but remember we're trying to make that as a positive statement so we can say Carl will go to the baseball game okay so how do we write these two now uh, this sentence in, into symbols well the sentence here says Carl will not go to the movie so that's the opposite of P so I'm gonna put negation P and then this one here is negation Q so the symbol becomes so we can say that is negation P or negation Q alright so that's the the symbolic form for this whole sentence here all right so you understand the goal here is to put all those sentences into symbols all right okay we have two uh, two other symbols that we're going to use in this chapter and I haven't talked about those two symbols yet but I'm gonna write them here and then we're gonna go to the PowerPoint and talk about them it, uh, the the next connective is called the then connective well it's not actually then it's the if then it's it's a conditional and if then connective is represented the symbol is an arrow like that and then there is another one is the if and only if so that's the last one this one is a little bit more tricky but I'll explain that later so the symbol is a double error so at this point uh, we're gonna convert the statements that have these two connectives we're gonna convert them into symbols okay so let's go to the PowerPoint here so let's let's look at the if then if then is called a conditional statement and it's symbolized by this arrow and is read if then now again this is a connective so there's a statement that comes before and the statement comes after the statement that comes before the arrow so the statement comes here before the arrow is called the antecedent and the term that comes after the arrow is called the consequent let me show you an example here let's say a simple statement P is Nathan goes to the park okay and then here's another simple statement Nathan will swing look at these uh, statements here these are called conditional statements because you put you're putting the word if and then in the middle here between the two simple statements you're putting the word then so it, it becomes a conditional it says if Nathan goes to the park then he will swing so that's a conditional statement here's another one if if Nathan go does not go to the park then he will not swing so how do we put those statements into symbols well here's the solution look at the first one Nathan goes to the park right so that will be this one here that's exactly P okay and then you see the word then so that's the connective that's the arrow 
Yeah, I know that the uh, the then is missing the if, but the if is always at the beginning of the sent the whole sentence. So it's kind of weird, but uh, but you you know you will know that the then the word then separates the two simple statements. So Nathan goes to the park. If Nathan goes to the park, then he will swing. He will swing. That's exactly the Q statement here. So putting that into words will be P conditional Q. The next sentence, the next uh, compound statement says, if Nathan does not go to the park, look at this statement here. Nathan does not go to the park. That's the opposite of the P, isn't it? Because P is Nathan goes to the park. So that means I have the negation P. And then conditional, he will not swing. He will not swing is the opposite of Q. So here is the negation Q. So that's the symbolic form for this compound sentence right here. All right. And then finally, we have the last connective. Uh, this connective here, uh, it rarely happens, but you, you might see in a few texts, in a few textbooks, in a few books. Uh, it's called the biconditional. It's symbolized by the double arrow here. So the biconditional is uh, sometimes it's abbreviated as IFF, which means if and only if. Okay, and here's an example. The apartment is cold if and only if the AC is on. Okay, what does that mean? The apartment is cold if and only if the AC is on. It really means a biconditional. It's a condition in both ways. So it really means this. If the apartment is cold, then the AC is on. And if the AC is on, then the apartment is cold. Okay, very weird, isn't it? But we'll, we'll, we'll look at into this uh, connective uh, with a little more detail later. So, but uh, anyway, we can still write that in symbols, okay? Look at this example. She is saved if and only if she does good works. Okay, so what does that mean? It's a bicondition. It means that if she's saved, then she does good works. And if she does good works, then she's saved. Okay, so you can kind of switch. So it really means this. Now, how do we put those into, uh, how do we put that into symbols? So it's very easy. Let's say, for example, I have a simple statement that says the dryer is running and Q says the, there are clothes in the dryer. Well, then look at this one here. I have Q by condition of P. It really means that it's a by condition. It's a, it, it's a conditional going both ways. So let's write that in, into words. So writing this into words means the clothes are in the dryer. So that's exactly Q here. See, the clothes are in the dryer. If and only if, because it's a biconditional, if and only if the dryer is running. So that's P. P is the dryer is running. Look at, let's look at uh, statement B. How do we write that into words, into English, okay? In English. Well, uh, when we have this uh, negation outside the parentheses, we can, we can say it's false. It's false what? that the uh, the dry is running so that's the p here if and only if and they, look at this negation q what is the negation of q there are there are clothes in the dryer so uh, the clothes are not in the dryer okay or there are no clothes well the clothes are not in the dryer so that's what uh we, we're trying to say so it's false that the the dry is running if and only if the clothes are not in the dryer oh that's uh, complicated isn't it but we're just translating that into words okay so what that means is not so important now we're trying to just convert those things into into words